Everybody cup your hands right here. Hey y'all, it's Erin Ashley back with No More Scars and I'm back with another video with some content, some great content today and with today we're talking about cyberbullying. But before we get into this topic, before we dive into our topic, I want you guys to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the bell so you can get notified every time notified every time we upload. You never know when we upload. We may upload twice a day, we may upload three times a day, we may upload every day in a week you never know so that's why you need to put the um hit the click the bell sorry click the bell so you can always be notified every time we get in a video so you won't miss nothing so here we go today i t um, i want to talk about cyberbullying to the reason why i took so long to upload another video from last month or from march because i really wanted to give you guys like some time to actually work on yourself and think about what we talked about in the last video about hurt and how not to hurt people or how to get over hurt so that's why it took me so long to um upload another video but here we are today talking about cyberbullying and cyberbullying is one of the things that's really really popular in the world today because it's so much technology and i don't understand why um cyberbullying is even a thing but it is so since it's a thing i'm here to talk about it and i'm a witness about it i've seen it i've i've been a victim of it so I'm here to talk to you about how to overcome it. If you if you are right now being cyberbullied or if you have been cyberbullied before and you just don't know how to come out of that embarrassment, you feel like you don't want to come outside and be around people because you've been embarrassed and la la la. So here we are today to talk about it. So let's dive right into this topic because I don't want it to be a long video, but I want it to be a strong video. So today we're talking about cyberbullying and of course cyberbullying is a form of bullying just in a form of being behind a computer or a phone screen and yes i said phone screen because a lot of time a lot like nowadays a lot of people don't have computers and their phones are their computers like my iphone right now is my computer until i get my laptop so it's like I do everything on my phone. So of course, cyber bullies are like the same way. If they don't have a computer, everything is on their phone. And um, it's becoming so, like people have become so tech savvy that they're texting people from a fake number from a text now app and spreading lies or maybe sometimes even people's business, personal personal business that they told a close friend and um, their, that close friend told a friend. What I always tell people is that everybody has a friend. So if I'm telling my friend something, of course, like my friend has another friend and they may tell them, may or may not, but my friends are not like that. But you get the point. So um, that's what I was saying about um, the text now number. They start texting people, they start spreading lies, or they sometimes tell people's business, or like sometimes they like, some people are just secretly like against a person or just want to ruin somebody's reputation so they like start texting everybody that the person knows or even the person that they don't some people don't know and they just start spreading lies and rumors about the person just to humiliate them that's a way of cyberbullying which is very corny but that's neither here nor there cyberbullying of course as i first stated is a person being being behind a computer screen, bullying a person on social media, harassing them, saying things, saying mean things, and spreading lies and so forth, like I said. So who are these cyber bullies? Like, who are these cyber bullies and why are they doing this? Cyber bullies are haters. As much as I don't like talking about haters, my pastor hates it as well. Like, I hate talking about haters. I hate, like, I will never have a video about haters because I don't like speaking about haters because that's all people talk about is haters. So like whatever but anyway so um cyber bullies are haters jealous friends enemies um envious exes old friends that no longer like have a lives it really could be anybody and you never know who it could be and that's the sad part because nowadays people could smile in your face and be for you all in your face and then as soon as you turn them as soon as you turn your back they throwing daggers in your back and they're all of a sudden all of a sudden against you which is like mad corny again like but that's like another conversation for another time like but anyways 
a cyber bully a cyber bully is anybody who doesn't have a life or enjoys your life more than their own or anybody like just anybody um and i always say that anybody that has to tear down another person to shine to get their shine on is a coward so moving on it's very corny and i mean corn like corny to be a cyber bully anybody who is a cyber buddy cyber bully excuse me is a real life punk one because why do you have to hide behind a computer screen or a phone screen to belittle someone or embarrass someone um, you know, like back in the days, like when we were in school, um, I don't want to tell my age, but back when we were in school in um, elementary school and high school and even high school, we had bullies, but we had real life bullies. Like they would bully you in your face. Like they would pick on you, throw paper balls. They never waited till they got home to get on their, get on aim. Back in the day, we had aim to get on aim to cyber bully a person or to get on MySpace to um, cyber bully a person. We never would like that. I was never a bully. That's first and foremost. But the bullies back then, they were never like that. They bullied that person every time they saw them. And then back in the days, the person that was being bullied would have would get enough of it and would actually like beat that bully down. Because sometimes, most of the time, nine times out of ten. A bully it can't fight a bully is just somebody that's trying to portray to be somebody that they're really not so that's why they become bullies you feel me so with all that being said bullies throw the rock and hide their hand in a type of way in a certain type of way because once they get beat up by the person it's like oh she beat me up she beat me up blah, blah, blah. but yeah you got beat up because you were bullying that person so and they had enough of it so now you got beat up now you had to face the consequences of your actions you see so um going on the flip side of it being the person being the victim of the cyber bullying is very hurtful and shameful and embarrassing to be cyber bullied um because your business is out there for the world to see there being lies told about you um people may or may not believe it they're looking at you differently from what they before before the lies and the rumors started and then the alleged rumors started and it only leads to a road of destru destruction some people um go um turn to drugs some people turn to alcohol and become alcoholics some people turn to suicide want to um take their own life because they don't know how to handle being cyber bullied and they don't know how to handle um being embarrassed that embarrassment is like oh my god i don't know how to handle this so that's why i'm here today because we're going to talk about how to handle it and how to get over it so i know many victims of cyberbullying myself um one of my closest friends um you call my no you can't call my best friend but one of my closest friends like we're really really close was a victim of it and so was i and it was from a friend of ours, two different friends though. It was a friend, um, a friend of ours that cyber bullied us at the time that was secretly jealous of what we had and what we had going on and la la la. But at the time, I didn't really have anything going on. I was just being me. Like, I don't know, just being a likable person. Some people don't like me when they first meet me, which is okay. And then when they get to know me, they be like, oh, you mad cool, la, la, la. Which happens in a lot of cases. Like, a lot of people do that with a lot of people. So, it's whatever. But I was just being me, being my likable person. And then out of nowhere, I was being cyber bullied. And I didn't understand why. I was, like, so confused. But, um... Me and my my friend and I, we both handled things differently. She disappeared off the face of the earth. And I mean, disappeared, like, never to return. Like, nobody know where she's at. I mean, like, we speak from time to time. But, like, I'm talking about, like, everybody else, they don't know where she's at. And she doesn't want anybody to know where she's at. She's just handling it differently. She's healing from it. But in the same breath, she doesn't want anybody to know where she's at because... Oh, whatever happened so um the way I handled it was totally different I handled it a different way and this is me before the therapy <laughs> I went 
off on social media. When I say I went off, I went off. I was just going off and carrying on. Like I was cursing everybody out. I was airing everybody's business out. I said, in my head, I was like, oh, my business is out there. So I'm airing everybody else's business out there. I went off. I was just cursing and carrying on you. I was calling everybody everything but a child of God. And I'm telling you, I regret it now because that's not like the light that I want to be shown in. Like it was like I was being like immature at the time. But at the time I was like hurt and embarrassed and I wanted to clear my name at the same time. But in the same breath, like as I look back on it now, when I was writing this, I was like, well dag erin you really was like doing the most like you need to calm down you should have calmed down or something but then that's needless to say that you learn from your actions <laughs> so that's how i'm able to talk about it now so um i was erin everybody was just, uh, i cut everybody off like i didn't trust nobody at the time like i didn't trust nobody like the only person i was talking to at the time was my mother and my pastor at the time and that was it. Like, I didn't trust nobody. I blamed everybody. I blamed my friends. I blamed the people. I blamed everybody. I blamed the person, the guy that I was speaking to at the time, because he kind of sort of started it. Uh, I blamed the person who sent um, the pictures and the messages out. I blamed the people who knew and didn't tell me. I even blamed the person that told me because... I don't even know. I just blamed them because I was like, okay, like, what's going on here? And then I blamed myself as well because I'm like, I should have known better not to even do this type of behavior, send these type of pictures or whatever the case may be. But that's neither here nor there. I was like, I was like, so like, I was so upset, like so frantic. I was breaking everything in my room. I was doing everything. I went outside and I threw a brick at somebody's car. I was so heated. Of course I had to pay for it, but I was so heated, I was so mad. But I even like, I was like, I didn't blame God, but I asked God, I was like, well, how could you let this happen to me? Like, what did I do for this to happen to me? Like, I was really like no good. I stopped going to church. I was embarrassed. I didn't, I was like so embarrassed. I could not face those people because some of them laughed at me. Some of them, some of them believed the lies that was spread about me. Some of them was like screenshotting it and saving it. And some people was even sending it more. Like it was like becoming like a whirlwind in like a, a world star thing but it didn't end up on world star i'm just saying it just was becoming a world star thing and i was just like oh my god i was so embarrassed i was so like i don't know and i got to a point where of course like i was like i said like people turn to alcohol and i was drinking every day i mean like waking up drinking boom breakfast drinking boom mimosa lunch drinking boom gotta have a cocktail dinner drinking boom like i was just drinking 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 and then i was like i got to a point where i was like you know what i can't even take a life no more i said so i contemplated like suicide i contemplated i had four suicide attempts in my entire life and i thank god for him taking those suicidal thoughts out of my brain like i will never have another suicidal thought ever because that's just the relationship me and God have. And it's just, that's just another topic for another time because I don't want to get emotional. Um, but yeah, so I was it was like nothing helping. Like therapy wasn't helping. Um, no, 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 I didn't go to therapy yet. I didn't go to therapy yet. But it was like nothing was helping. I was like, I, I'm not even going to pray because what's the point? Because he let this happen. And then I was like talking to my mother. I was talking to my mother about it. And then she was just like oblivious because she's like not savvy like tech savvy so she's trying to understand like well how did all these people get in and la la and so that was driving me crazy so then i was just like i don't have nobody to talk to so i was like you know what let me just go the world would just be better off without me anyway and so when I said that, I was just like, something had hit me to like, let me call this person. So I called her and cause everybody I was calling, cause I really wanted to speak to somebody to like just rant about it, to just like actually turn me away from taking my own life. Cause at that point I was ready to take my own life. So I was like, let me call somebody to see if things going like, 
turn me away from it or say something motivational to like not make me take my own life so everybody was called was so busy so i was like all right so i said let me call this one more person i called her and i told her what was going on even though she already know what was going on I called her and I told her and then she prayed with me and then she told me she was like don't blame yourself you was like she was like you made a mistake and sometimes God has to expose you to get your attention and I sat there and I was like now nah, wait I said he got my attention all right because this is a way to if anything could get my attention it was that and he did it and then she also said um you said everybody believed those lies. She was like, and I didn't. I didn't believe those lies. She said, because I know the real you. I know the real Erin. And I look past all those lies those that people was telling. She was like, and I look past your actual flaws. Because we all have flaws. She was like, I, I, I look past your actual flaws. And I see the woman of God that God wants you to be. And I literally fell to my knees and started crying all over again. And then she prayed with me. And then she said, lady, get your butt back in church. And ever since then, I've never, ever since that conversation with her, I've never allowed people's words or outlooks um, or opinions about me knock me off course. And ever since then, I stayed with God. I built my relationship back with God and I never turned back. And I've been blessed ever since. So that's why I am able to speak about it now without crying. I'm able to speak about it without getting depressed. I'm able to speak about it and help somebody else without um um turning them to to um suicide or brushing them to the side like everybody did had did me. Um whew, that was a lot. I stayed with God and I never turned back. And it's inevitable to have a relationship with God because stuff like this won't affect you as much as it would if you didn't have a relationship with him. But again, that's another topic for another time. I said, and there's people like her, like that, like mentors that we need to stop us from doing certain things. So I'm like, um, going on social media, doing, um, just going rampant, um, certain fights, suicide, and even cyberbullying. And I want to tell you today that my mentor saved my life. May God continue to rest. We have soul continue to rest with Jesus Christ himself. But my mentor saved my life, like literally. And I'm telling you, she saved my life because had she not answered that phone, I probably would have been in a grave six feet under seriously like really seriously and i said all that to say get a mentor male and female males need mentors just as much as females need mentors and get someone older don't get someone don't get a mentor that's the same age as you because y'all y'all going through the same stuff y'all live the same life kind of sort of so you need someone older much older with wisdom um they can help you make wise decisions um they can pray with you and help guide you through the way of life they um are there for you to help you vent they i'm um, not help you vent but you can vent and then they'll give you some godly counsel hallelujah they'll give you some godly counsel on how to go about the situation that you just vented about um what would I say to a cyber bully? Um, I would say to a cyber bully to find something to do. Get a life. Find, start a business. Find some business of your own so you don't have to spread everybody else's. If your life is not so exciting, make it exciting. Get a job. Start a hobby or something. Find a mentor, like I said. Don't just sit around trying to ruin somebody else's life because that's very, very corny. And like I said earlier, you trying to um, tear somebody else down to get your shine on is only going to make you a coward. So you never want to go about it that way. Just go about it the straight and narrow way. Of course, you're going to hit some bumps in the road. Start a brand. Start a business. Pick up a craft. Do something. Write a book. Start a blog. Do something with your life. Get a prayer life. 
I know it sounds cliche and I'm not trying to force you I'm not trying to force Jesus on you but I'm telling you that it's real it keeps you out of trouble you it keeps you out of trouble and it keeps you sane and it keeps you busy because once you get a, a prayer life with Jesus Christ he will give you downloads of things that you can that you're able to do um crafts that you knew that you never knew that you were able to do or something like that so get a prayer life um you you if you get a prayer life you'll be too busy talking to God that you won't have any you won't be um you won't have no free time to talk to anybody else about negative stuff I'm telling you trust me get a prayer life and pray get a mentor and talk to them and go to therapy therapy helps I don't care what the church tells you about a therapist go to therapy because it helps although it's a lot of money it helps I'm telling you from experience okay so that is our topic today we finished talking about cyberbullying I hope this video I pray this video blessed you and helped you in some type of way. Join us next time on No More Scars with Erin Ashley with more content, more content to help, encourage, inspire, and uplift you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you can get notified every time we come with another video with some good content. Hey, y'all. Don't forget to follow us on social media on Instagram and Facebook. And remember that you shall never be defeated.